You're watching Hastings TV and we're out in Las Vegas for CES 2010. Now we've been over on the Cool It booth for the last couple of shows and uh, in the last one Jeff Lyon was talking about Maestro and his Maestro software. And what it is, is it's all about wireless controlling of your PC. So imagine that these are all the fans which you've got in your PC. So there's a temperature sensor, there's a controller node, there's a USB controller um, and the fans and all this sort of thing. Now what Jeff's going to do is he's going to show us how that actually works. So if we go over here, Jeff say hi. Hi. Got him well trained. Okay, so Jeff, I've just explained that that board over there is representative of all the bits and pieces that you can control within the PC case. So show us what the software does. Well, the software is actually designed to create an easy to use chassis thermal control and RGB lighting control scheme. So in the past, these types of capabilities were only the domain of the high-end OEM because they had resources to develop special things like RGB lighting control, fan different control curves, and we thought, with the right technology and the right software thoughts, we could actually package this up and deliver it to the end user or the enthusiast so that they can have all the bells and whistles that perhaps an XPS or an Alien Effects um, package would potentially deliver. Yeah, okay. So, show, so just walk us through it. Just talk us through it now. So what we've got here is a, a wizard-based setup. So I'm actually going through the, the Maestro setup. I'm first going to choose what type of chassis that I've got. So I've got various different things. What we're going to enable here is an ability for you to even upload a picture of your own chassis. Um, and then it'll be the backdrop for all the various different control elements. Next, we're going to do something called zone setup. So zone-based control is probably a little bit of a new term, and it's something that I think makes the most sense. When you set up a zone, first thing that we're actually doing is identifying the zone name, and then we're saying, okay, where is that zone located? So the first wing is, is actually the CPU temperature. So it's going to be around six. Number six. Next thing, I'm calling it the blue zone, because in fact, actually on the board where we were just over there, it's actually the blue zone. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to call that, I don't know, number four. Okay, yeah, I see, yeah. So, so basically that's monitoring, say, my uh, optical drive. That's right. And if I was to add a, another sensor module, then I could just create a new zone, and then I'd have, you know, another function temperature and add that. Yep. Easy. So, piece of cake. Next thing I'm going to do is move it over, and it's going to say, okay, enable devices. Where? What zone are they associated with? Well, I'd like actually to have fan number three in the blue zone. I could have fan number four, you know, for a, this example, I'll call it the CPU one zone. And what that means is that the fan number three is going to actually be governed in terms of its speed reactions to the, uh, um, the blue temperature sensor zone. Yeah. Next thing, I've got the LEDs on the right. I'm going to put those in the blue zone as well. Now, the reason that I would want to be associating the uh, devices with the temperature, like LEDs, for example, is we can actually have those be dynamic. We can have the LEDs go different colors based on whatever temperature they're sensing. So if it goes red, we know we're overheating, and if it's blue, we know it's all cool, and if it's green, it's in the middle. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. So the, um, the, the interesting thing here, again, is that we can actually identify the locations of each of these things. I'm going to put the blue zone fan 3 as, I think it's actually, I'm going to guess whether it's uh, number 3 and uh, CPU fan temperature. I'm gonna pretend that it's number five, like a chassis fan or a vantage fan type thing. And uh, LEDs on the right, I'll put those in position number three as well. And I'm done. That's it? Yeah, okay. so the next thing I'm, I'm looking in here and I'm gonna say, okay, well, uh, I'm gonna go into the, the data display I've got the CPU zone, I've got LEDs on the right, I've got these various different fans. I'm going to associate, if I want to do reconfiguring on any of these, I can put the, the fan, add it to a zone, I'll put it in the CPU zone. So now it's over here. And it's going to change its speed based on the CPU temperature that's controlled. If I want to change how that fan reacts, I can just pick very quickly the quiet default, the performance default, or the extreme default. Or if I'm really wanting to tweak it out, I can go to custom control and create my own five-point fan curve. Okay. For that's really for someone who hasn't got a girlfriend, surely? I would think, or don't want one. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the next thing is you can actually pick a fixed RPM. Now there's a subtlety to this that isn't necessarily obvious. A lot of people have adjustable fan speeds, and what they're typically doing is varying a percentage of PWM. 
Right. Uh, and so a PWM percentage is basically a guess. I want to go half as fast, so I'm going to run the fan at 50%. Yeah. Well, it's not always the case. In fact, actually, there's usually quite a variance in those, those fan curve responses. So what we did, because I think it makes the most sense, and we've got the intelligence built into the system, we actually have RPM control. So what it's doing is, in fact, setting a, a, when it first turns on, it runs the fan, because it may not be ours, through a full range and remembers where all those settings are, RPM to PWM, and then it will attempt to set the exact RPM that's on there. And then after that first guess, it'll actually read back into its memory what the achieved RPM is and then tweak it a couple of times and zoom right in on the actual RPM, because that's... I believe when you're setting up a thermal profile, you want to tune it by RPM, not percentage of fan. You want it something that's going to be accurate and not just kind of like sticking, yeah, about that. That's right. I mean, if we've got the technology to do it, why not? Yeah, fair enough. Fair um, so after you go through that, you know, we'll get to some of the fun stuff here. I want to change the, uh, the color of my um, LEDs. I'll add those to the zone as well. We'll make them in the CPU zone. And I don't like them green. I want to change them to another color. I can do temperature control, as I was saying, so 20 degrees is blue, 40 degrees is red. I can do a custom color, so I don't want it to be green anymore. I can turn them off. I can turn them to blue. Maybe I'll turn it to pink. Um, so when I get over, um, I could even have it pulse to have a nice little heartbeat, a little bit of dynamic um, activity, and I want my, uh, my PC to look like it's, you know, got some life to it. Um, after I finish going through all this configuration, I can actually save this as a profile as well, so that I can have a gaming type profile. I can then have a HTPC profile. I can have a my wife's at home profile. So it's a bit like the uh, Windows Power Options, where you can change it for what you're using the PC for. So if you want it for gaming, you turn all the fans right up, keep the core temps cool, and if you're using it as HTPC, you turn the LEDs off and the fans down. Is that that right? That's exactly it. Okay. All right. So how do you save the profile? Is it just simple? Yeah, just right under the menu, you can actually name it to whatever you want to have. So, Blue Side Profile, Maestro Board, CES, you know, there's there's lots of, yeah. or I can create a new one. Yeah, and you just drop it all in there. And, and that's, that's it. That's exactly it. Okay. So the, um, the one last thing in terms of tools or options that we've got built into this is notifications. Um, so, if anything were to go wrong or you wanted to define a, a, a problem area or something like that, I can actually go right down to the, you know, core temperature, I want it to be no more than 5,000 degrees, as it says right up here, yeah. or maybe well, 50 that's, that's or 80 yeah. or something like that, then I can have it send me an email, or I can have it instruct Windows to shut down the computer, or I can have it run a file. Um, I can actually have any of these things. Oh, so you can get it to send you an email, yep. so you can get it to say, send me an email because you're breaking down, shut the PC down to stop it going wrong, and then I presume this is a, a, a dump file? Yeah, well, you can run a file of whatever you're choosing, like if you had some pre-configured, uh, you know, dump, save out to, you know, something on an ass box or something yeah. like that, then you could go do that. Okay. Um, so, you know, we could also even use the RGBs as something functional. We can trigger all the RGBs to, to flash red um, yeah. if something bad has happened so that you get a visual indication immediately that something's gone wrong. Fantastic. Can you can you get it to say something like, you know, launch missiles across the screen or something like that, just to, <laughs> just to scare the missus because she touched it and probably broke it? Well, you'd have to build that yourself and then just run the file. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And then uh, what's its graphs now, is it? Well, actually, what we did to have some fun, since we've got the uh, wireless link into the Vantage screen, you can have your own image go onto the Vantage screen. This is a little image editor. So with its, you know, 84 by uh, 48 LCD, you can make your own picture. I'm horribly creative, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, and then I can actually send that up onto the screen and choose the color, the back uh, backlight color, um, to suit the internal decor of my... Uh, yeah, you see, that's just far too some too tempting with someone with a juvenile mind like mine. <laughs> it really is. Because you know what I draw. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I can't wait to see it on film. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to because my boss is standing right there. Okay, well, you, you won an award for this, didn't you? You won an innovation award yes, for this, didn't you? Yes, we did. We won a, uh, a showcase award for the CES 2010 uh, innovations. So have you won an award for like the company to win the most awards? <laughs> well, we're working on that, but I think there may be a possibility to uh, maybe up it for next year one more. <sighs> okay, oh, well, there we go. Well, Jeff, thank you very, very much. Um, check back soon on Hastings TV for more from CES 2010 out here in Las Vegas.